It's a movement for change and the national interest movement. Another pressure in political groups on Wednesday formed an alliance for revolutionary change in a bid to break the NDC, MPP Duopoly. The alliance seeks to bring renewed hope to many Ghanaians that had almost given up on having any credible alternative with candidates of substance in the 2024 elections. How are Ghanaians receiving this? And is this really the third force that Ghanaians have been yearning for? I've been joined by senior political science lecturer at the Department of Politics of the University of Ghana, Dr. Kwame Asasante, for a conversation on this. Grateful for your time, Doc. How bad do we need a third force as a country? Um, good morning to you, Aisha, and then good morning to your viewers. Uh, I'm not sure we need a third force so badly. If we did, uh, we'd have done something uh, drastic towards it. One, um, it is a fact that Ghanaians are sick and tired about the duopoly. But what effort have we done towards arresting this situation? And my big answer is nothing. Nothing in the sense that we know what causes the duopoly. One is the electoral laws that we have, which is centered on a simple majority system that is first past the post system. So uh, you either win landslide, the worst it will be for a tie to be broken at the runoff. Uh, so always the dominant parties take the lead here. Um, the smaller parties are eclipsed. In other words, they are dwarfed uh, within this process. You come back to party systems, even though we have, you know, two dominant parties, NDC and MPP, but if you trace them to the, the, the roots of Ghanaian politics from 1951, it is just uh, the changing forms that we have seen, but they all come from two roots, either CPP tradition or Nkrumah tradition or Dankobuzia tradition, even though there have been what, you know, different uh, pairings and align alignment and the rest of them. So if you really is inter you are interested in a third force, you must do something about the party system, uh, move away from a two-party system into a multi-party system where you have uh, more than two parties in the states and each of them have what it takes to win power and form a government. Then you are likely to have a government which is not based on, you know, landslide victory, but what a coalition type of government. Then a third force become what prominent in here. But as at now, once you have not changed the rules of the game, and then you continue to maintain a two-party tradition, I'm afraid a third force will be a mirage. We're, we've seen the movement for change, and we've seen the Ghana interest movement uh, merging. There are other pressure and political groups who have also joined this to form an alliance, and they say their main aim is to break the NPP-NDC duopoly. Is this the third force that we've been yearning for? Um, in addition to what I've said, yes, Ghanaians talk about head force, but they have not done something uh, practical to effect the change. Aside what I have said, one of the things, if you really want to understand elections, you can understand it from the point of view of the meaning of election, where we said there are models that help us to understand election. One of it is a dominant uh, party model. All right. This model simply talks about the fact that you have parties that have dominated the political space and people vote based on that tradition and all that. If you look at this group, all right, which of the areas do they have a tradition called what the third force or uh, the uh, movement for change? We don't have that. You are now developing. It will take a while for it to be internalized by the people who vote. So the dominant party tradition or model will kick against this. Uh, if you look at the NDC and MPP, they have dominated the political space. The tradition is there. People vote for them in their strongholds where they don't even think about any message or whatever. Here you are. Um, if you look at uh, other factors such as uh, popularity, which is also an important barometer to mention, to measure how an election, uh, how people accept the political party. Are they that popular throughout the country? And that popularity is a function of the constituencies that you control. In other words, we are talking about your strongholds. Do they have any stronghold that they claim uh, they have their hold on and that they can governize, support there and win election? That is simply no. If you're talking about visibility, how visible uh, is this group that we can find 
in all areas of this country. It is an important barometer to check whether you are in business and whether people support you. But apart from that, we are also talking about what policies and programs. Yes, you can, uh, that one, they can survive in there because they will come out with what they have started with nice policies and programs and all that. But what we do them in is the issue of what record that uh, we have said that governance is not mainly about ideas alone, but it's what a referendum of your work. What are your records? What records can they show as a group in that day? The best that we can come closer to is an individual as well, how far they have gone in terms of the achievement in the political space. But as what an entity, do they have any record to show? If you talk about NDC, you can pinpoint what they have done since 1992. And so is the case for what NPP. So if you really want to break this thing, you, there's a whole lot of work that you need to do. But I know from where I sit, I believe and I believe strongly that they are not aiming at that, uh, the, you know, the presidential seat, but that they want to have influence in deciding the focus and direction of the election by what? Pushing the election to a second round. That is their focus because when they get there, then they have a bargaining chip and that they can use it to, you know, uh, make very strong uh, decision within the political space. And for this reason, should the two major political parties be worried? Should they feel threatened by this? Oh, obviously so, because uh, uh, if you look at the personalities, and remember that in uh, election, personality comes a lot. In 2016, we did some work about uh, uh, soliciting opinion from Ghanaians as to what will form their decision when they are looking for what a president for this country and one of their considerations was the fact that one they need what policies and programs all right if you look at the policies and programs that uh, this group has there's no doubt in my mind that it's very very interesting and it attracts a lot of people against the backdrop that the people the leaders some of them are towering personalities you cannot uh, you know close your eyes on that about the the personalities of what Alan Chermating, Abu Sakara, and the rest of them. And this is something that we glean from our 2016 uh, election analysis that we did. But apart from the track record, one other thing is also what the presidential candidate is. Uh, all these things um, put together, in addition to what your ability to command resources, both human and material, to run your campaign throughout the new uh, cranny of this country, your ability to be able to also have strategies that will be able to what, pull you the votes that you need. And of course, the messages which are born out of what? Your manifesto, which is nothing but what? The, the problems and solutions of this country, which you have what, tailored them along what? National levels, regional level, and constituency level. Your ability to be able to put all this mix together and make sense will always what? Uh, give you the results that you want. But if these people are able to do this, in addition to other groups whose contribution will obviously come and support the smaller uh, entities such as what the one we are talking about, then obviously it calls for worry for the stronger, uh, the dominant parties, because what you don't want as a dominant party is for the election to be pushed to a second round. And that one, it creates all manner of problems for you, especially incumbent party, which uh, is uh, in government. And that one, uh, it creates, uh, the, it opens the floodgate for all manner of things to happen uh, to that party. Well, we'll see. We'll see how this goes, considering it's a crucial election we're gearing up to. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sasante, for your time this morning. He's a...